like always, I appreciate you guys uh, coming down and covering Penn State football. Uh, like always, I appreciate everybody coming in and, and uh, coming down and covering Penn State football. Uh, obviously, the, the biggest factor to me in the game that stood out uh, in the second half was the quarterback running game. Uh, we did a really good job in the first half of, of limiting uh, explosive runs. Um, but in the second half, they made an adjustment and made a commitment to run the quarterback. We had a couple opportunities to get tackles for loss. Uh, that would have got them off schedule, missed them in that opening drive. Uh, he broke tackles, and, and from that point on, we had a difficult time um, stopping the run. You know, obviously, some guys played a significant amount of reps. I thought our guys played extremely hard. Uh, but we did not play well enough, obviously, to win the game defensively. Three trips to the red zone, uh, weren't able to get weren't able to get points off of that one missed field goal, uh, and, it, and obviously an interception. Um, Got to give Arkansas credit. Got to give them credit. Um, obviously, we didn't we didn't play well enough to win. So um, love these love these guys. Love these seniors. How they battle all year long. Uh, obviously, uh, we'll get back um, after after break get back for the start of next semester and get to work. So open up the questions. Mike, we'll start with you. James, uh, what was the adjustment that they made that allowed them to run? It seemed like up the middle so much. And they just, they committed to running the quarterback. So they went with zone read on the perimeter. Um, and then they went zone read inside where they were reading the linebacker. And if he ran over the top with the running back and they pulled it, and hit the quarterback up inside. They they committed to running the quarterback in the second half, and that was uh, that was obviously a major factor in the game. Rich, James, why did the offense struggle so much in the second half as opposed to the first half when you were able to move the football? Well, I, I think you know to be honest with you, we had a couple of big plays uh, in the first half. We weren't consistent enough, but we we were able to create some big plays. We did make those plays in the second half. We had opportunities, dropped some balls. Um, you know, they did a good job with their cover zero being extremely aggressive, um, but we could not get in and out of our checks uh, fast enough uh, to be efficient enough. So, um, got to give them credit. James, uh, Kevon Lee had some splash plays early, and then he didn't touch the ball for about two quarters. Dan, what was the, I guess, the dynamics that led to, to him not touching the ball again for so long? Yeah, we need to run the ball more consistently. Um, there's no doubt about that. You can't go away from it. Um, we did some good things in the first half. We got to keep those things mixed in, and we, we didn't do that. I agree with you. Mark? James, you had indicated that you might have burned uh, Budden and Kobe's uh, red shirts. What went into the decision not to do that? And what sort of position did that put you in depth wise, uh, obviously, with, with some of the guys you didn't have? Yeah, so you know, what we'll do in all these situations, I think you guys know, we'll, we'll sit down uh, with the coaching staff and we'll sit down with the players and Sometimes we'll include the parents in that conversation. And both of those guys would have played and, and would have had to play uh, if we had some injuries, uh, but they wanted to, they wanted to preserve the red shirts. James, what did you think of the effort you got from Smith and Goldberg today? Yeah, obviously, you know, three sacks. I knew he had a couple sacks. I didn't know he had three uh, for an out, bowl, out, outback bowl record. Um, so obviously that is promising for our future. Uh, it's going to be really, really important you know, that he continues to grow and continues to develop. You know, obviously, coming to Penn State, he was a he was a new to football guy, being mainly a basketball player. So, um, excited about his development, and um, that'll be that'll be something to build on for sure. Yeah. Okay, what was the, the uh, situation with Sean bringing him out of the game, and, and what did you think of his performance overall? Yeah, the medical staff uh, brought brought Sean out of the game. Um, you know, I thought he played gutsy. I thought he battled. Um, obviously, you know, he made some plays, but there's also some plays I know he would like to have back. Um, and I think there's some things that we can do to help him as well. Yeah. James, can you uh, take us through the couple of the field goal situations using Penninger? Is that looking ahead? And also the fake, uh, the fake punt toward the end of the half there. Yeah, uh, Penninger was... Pinniger was the uh, field goal kicker for the last game of the year. I think I thought we talked about that, but he was the field goal kicker uh, for the last game of the year. We made that change um, to take some off of Stout's plate. Stout had punted and kicked off really well all year long. We were a little inconsistent in the field goal game. Uh, so we made that change at the end of the season. So that was consistent. 
Um, there at the end of the half, it was a, a 54 yard field goal. We didn't feel good about kicking it. We had a fake in the game plan. Um, felt like in that situation, we'd either get a pass interference call, um, or I was hoping that they would catch the interception, which would have been as good as a punt. Yeah. James, how would you evaluate Jesse Lucetta's play given that he primarily played linebacker after switching back and forth all year? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge Jesse Lucetta fan. And I will pound the table for uh, him with every single NFL team, GM, um, coaches. Uh, the guy is a football player. He loves football. Uh, he's a great teammate. Uh, he's played a lot of different positions. And as we all know, whether it's the NFL or any other industry, the more things that you can do to bring value, uh, the better. Um, so I'm proud of him. You know, he's smart. He's physical. Does a lot of different things, and obviously, you know, with our linebacker situation, you know, that was something that was going to have to happen, and, and he embraced it. And I thought he, I thought he played his tail off. In the back and forth. <laughs> Coach, did it just get to a point where you just ran out of gas? They were just leaning on your defense so long. Yeah, you know, obviously nobody wants me uh, wants to hear me say that, but but was that a factor in the game? Yes. Obviously, we had we had uh, a depth situation, um, and we had some a bunch of guys that played a bunch of played a bunch of football today that really hadn't played a bunch of football all year long. Uh, so I'm not, I wasn't going to bring it up, but, but it is a fact. Rich? James, can you describe the way Parker played today and also Tig on defense? Yeah, Parker, you know, I think you guys see there's a lot to be excited about in, in his future. Um, got tremendous ball skills. He's smart. Uh, he can make people miss built more like a tailback than he is a running back, which I think helps him in a lot of different situations. Even some of the punts that he fielded and got some positive yard, even the over the shoulder punt he caught, that thing gets to the ground. You know, those, those are the 20 yards, you know, that are hidden yardage in a game that, that people don't think about that, that he saved us. Um, so obviously coming in the next year to see Parker and to see Keandre, you know, really do some good things today, that's gonna be important because obviously we're losing a lot of production uh, in John Dotson. And Tig. Oh, and Tig. So, excuse me, I apologize. Thank you for bringing that back up. Um, yeah, and, and you guys, I don't know if you know this or not, you guys were out of practice. Tig didn't practice all week long. Um, literally did not get cleared until Friday post, post practice. Um, I'm not, as a coach, real happy about that because I can imagine he's going to tell me he doesn't have to practice all next year. Um, but, but he's another guy. You know, he's another guy. Trent, New Jersey, uh, Lackawanna Junior College, very appreciative of his opportunity at Penn State, um, is a football player, loves, loves to play the game. I think he looked, he looked this year at, at kind of how Brisker coming back, how that played out for him and you know, the advantage for him and for us. Um, and I think it, it makes sense for Tig. And the other thing, obviously, is, is graduation is really important to him and his family, too. So that factored into it, too. Okay, two last questions, Wilgie. James, after starting 5-0, and out, how would you characterize the finish of the season? Well, obviously, a pretty pretty obvious question and answer. Um, you know, not, not what we had hoped for. Um, you know, obviously did some really good things early on. Um, you know, made some huge plays, made some big time wins in, in some tough environments on the road to start the season. Um, had some injuries that we weren't able to overcome quickly enough. Um, you know, but we're responsible for all that. I, I get it. I get it. Um, but overall, I'm proud of the guys in that locker room. Um, you know, not only as players, a lot of moving parts on the staff as well, uh, which wasn't brought up. A lot of moving parts there as well. But that's part of college football now. So um, I'm very, very appreciative of the guys in that locker room, players, coaches, staff, and everybody else. Um, but, but yeah, I get it. It's a fair question. You know, we started out five and zero, did some great things. Uh, and weren't able to finish the season the way we wanted to, but but we got some things to work on. We'll get it fixed. Last question, Neil. James, do you anticipate any other movement with your staff? There was a report that Joe Lorig may be on the move. Can you can you address that? Yeah, I'm not going to address uh, that right now. Um, obviously, he's being pursued. Um, you know, he is being pursued. I think you guys know that. That's that that information has, has been uh, out in the public. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that plays out. You know, we'll see how that plays out. There's a lot of things that factor into this, as you guys could imagine. Um, some professional and, and some personal. 
um, but, but we'll see how that goes. I think you guys know I've been pretty adamant in the past uh, about the type of moves, you know, and, and lateral moves, but then there's also some factors when it comes to, you know, where guys are from. You know, Bo, Joe, and his wife are from there, so that, that factors into this thing as well. Thank you very much, Coach. We'll have players out in the interview bays out here. Um,